All right, what's going on guys? So I successfully supercharged the 2.2. Uh, tune was done by ZZP, shout out to them. Uh, about four iterations, they uh, emailed me my files and I emailed them my base file and then we went back and forth and they eventually uh, corrected the air fuel ratios, spark timing advance, all that good stuff. And now it's at a point where it's running really, really good. So only issue I had was, um, well, used parts, right? So my intake manifold uh, did have a leak internally um, so we just put some uh, some dye inside the uh, the option B reservoir to put a black light in, so maybe we can look inside or outside if there's any leaks and make sure the system's good to go. Install wasn't too bad. Only fabrication I had to do um, this stud right here on both sides. You have to grind it down uh, if you're using the LSJ tensioner right here. Um, it won't fit with the stock nubs, but it, it took like 10 minutes with an angle grinder. It wasn't really too bad at all. I'm running the 3.1 inch pulley. Um, I needed to go to a shop to get the stock pulley off. They're on there really, really good. Uh, they're not easy to get off by any means, but if you have a good uh, a good pulley puller and a good impact uh, socket set, you're, you're good to go basically. Definitely use air tools for it though. So I'm using the stock uh, LSJ tensioner. The idler is down there, it just bolts into the stock location, no problems. Um, stock alternator, it can spin backwards, um, it converts it to DC so it doesn't really matter if it's out of phase by 180 degrees and all that other good physics. It corrects itself, no issues. Performance wise, really really good, about 13 PSI. Given the, their tune is a little more conservative, I could get more but playing it safe, right? So 60 pound injectors, um, stock internals. So you don't really want too much boost going through it because it's not forged like the LSJ block is. The 2.2s don't have forged internals, so they're not as strong. However, they can still take a, a, good, a good beating. So, so this is my PCV line. It does. Uh, it will spit out oil and gunk and other good stuff because there is positive pressure. Um, a lot more so with the supercharger setup going through here now. So it would be wise. That's one thing I did after the fact was putting in an oil catch can. I just got a cheap one off eBay just has to pretty much catch oil droplets and other sediment so pretty straightforward loops back around into the cold air intake cold air intake custom fit to my Saturn this is a cobalt one that I end up chopping up um, stock LSJ throttle body and I have the ZZP six pin to eight pin connector see it there you go uh, highly recommend it just makes it plug and play didn't touch my stock harness at all so if I do go back to OEM the only harness I had to snip was the map sensor, which is now over here. So what I did was, it's probably pretty wise to do this too. Um, this is my mass air flow extension that runs all the way back to the cold air intake. And what I did was I took the temperature reading from that and I piggybacked it through into the T-map sensor, if you follow me. So it's taking the T-map reading and putting it into the map harness. So my computer reads this temperature, not the cold air temperature, because you don't care about that. You care about this IAT after the supercharger compresses it and heats it all up. So definitely recommend that. It's just a stock LSJ uh, sensor. If you tell ZZP if you're going with them on our performance shop, tell them what sensor you're using and how your setup is, because it will affect your tune 100%. But this is a wise setup, because you know your IATs after uh, the supercharger compresses it, so the computer can compensate more correctly. Pretty much the setup. I'm doing option B as you can tell. Um, stock LSJ manifold or heat exchanger, sorry. Just sits in the middle. My uh, I had the brackets with my stock um, radiator, so basically it just bolts right in. It's very, very simple. And I did put a barb fitting, a little elbow on the top, so that the top of it is just a, a bung. So take that out, put a barb fitting in connect the hose to it it goes through here comes back out there and then into the top here so that this will have a stream of coolant and it will bleed out all the air bubbles from the system really good idle it 
will drop once it warms up a tiny bit here to about 750 to 800 RPM is usually what it will idle at. 78,000 kilometers. Got lots of life left. No codes. Computer's happy with the tune. Let's go check it out. See the option B bleeding to the top through that upper hose. Gets rid of all the air bubbles, very good idea. Feel it sucking the air through. Just a standard MagnaFlow exhaust can, six and a half inch round, nothing crazy. Sounds really good under load, but definitely have to take a, another video at some point of that. There's the idle back down a little bit to normal. You can see, no codes. And AFR is very good at idle. 14.63 is the ideal number that your computer will go for, so not too bad. Anyways, that's the setup, that's the sound, that's the startup. We'll get a driving video done for you guys at some point too.